All right, there's probably more bullshit posted about how to uh, uh, etch and coat a, a gas tank than anything I can think of. So there's two steps, and the first step is to uh, remove the rust. And uh, my favorite uh, thing to use is phosphoric acid. Now this stuff doesn't say phosphoric acid on the label, but that's what it is. You go to Home Depot, you get this stuff that says concrete and metal prep. I used to buy it in bottles that said from Jasco and it said phosphoric acid on the front and it was uh, quite concentrated. This stuff's about 40% I think out of the bottle if I remember right. Uh, this is gravel. Uh, this is blue, uh, blue uh, gr uh, basalt uh, gravel from my road. I've washed it in the sink with soap and water uh, really well so there's no leaves, branches, foreign material in it, just sharp rocks. Good old baking soda. You have to have this uh, for your to neutralize the acid after you're done with it and to protect yourself in case you spill it. And this is a bottle of water, half a gallon of water with you know, I don't know, about uh, uh, a cup of uh, baking soda in it. Uh, if you splash this stuff on yourself, you have to have this handy to neutralize it so you don't get burned. You have to protect your eyes. I'm going to, if you have a rubber or a plastic rain suit, uh, put it on. And, uh, oh, the other thing you have to have, uh, not in the picture, but we'll get it right now, is a pair of rubber gloves. So the longer the better. Uh, these are dish gloves and uh, you know they come uh, part way up your arm and that's uh, better than the little uh, little blue things but you have to have these I'm going to take today a, uh, a garbage sack and cut a neck a head hole and arm holes in it and uh, wear it to uh, cover my clothes and body um, because I'm too lazy to put on my rain suit uh, but if you're not real sloppy, uh, this will protect your clothing and most of your body. Uh, you want to wear uh, some kind of glasses uh, and you don't want to slop this stuff around. So here's a tank. This that happens to be a little generator tank and not a motorcycle tank, but it doesn't matter. I don't know if you can see inside, but it's got uh, plenty of rust in it. So what we're going to do, we sealed off the openings. Uh, this is... Uh, good old Gorilla Tape. Clean the metal, get this, this on there real good, and uh, take your pet cock out and uh, seal up that hole. Um, so we're going to put uh, gravel in here, sharp gravel. Uh, some people like to use um, nuts. And uh, they're not as sharp, uh, but they have, the, uh, they have the advantage of being magnetic if you don't use stainless ones. Um, your choice whether you're going to use really fine gravel like this or not, uh, it tends to get caught in there and hard to get out, so I'm not going to use it today. So, before I do anything more, I'm going to put on my protective clothing. Let's see what we're seeing here. Go wide angle. All I'm doing is I've cut myself out a little head hole, uh, cut myself out a little arm hole, just find the seam and just just cut the seam. Uh, let it figure out where you think your arm is going to be. Give a little bit to cover your shoulder and uh, just just cut the seam. You don't have to remove a lot of plastic. The more plastic you have there, the more protection you have. So. Not exactly what you'd call rocket science. This is a... <laughs> I guess this is a rain suit on my motorcycle, too. Same deal. Uh, and uh, be surprised how well it works. Anyway... Get my hat and glasses off so I can get my head through here. There we go. So this is a big trash bag. This is a 50-gallon 50, 50 trash bag. And this is going down 
well below my knees. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is going well below my knees. It comes almost to the elbows. Uh, I'm going to put my gloves on. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to dilute the acid. But um, <clears throat> if you do dilute the acid, uh, I don't know if you never took chemistry in school, but one thing you know is that you always pour the acid into the water. If you have a, a container of acid and you pour water in it, it'll boil and blow up in your face. But if you have water and pour uh, the acid into it, uh, it won't do that. Go slowly. But in this case, I'm going to use this stuff full strength. Now, I don't have any protection for my arms here. But uh, <clears throat> what I do have is a giant box of baking soda there. And this is a bottle. This is a half a gallon of water with, if you had a small box of, uh, of uh, baking soda, this would probably be about a half a box in here. Uh, you know, at least a, at least a cup or two of... Uh, of uh, baking soda. Now I'm going to put my glasses back on. If you have safety glasses, uh, use those. Um, oh, I'm not doing anything until I find my glasses. This is stupid. Now if there's some possibility that there's a, a grease or oil or gas residue in the tank, uh, you want to clean that. You can use something like uh, Acetone is some volatile, uh, volatile uh, cleaner to uh, to remove that. This is uh, very dry, so not really worried about that. Put that straight in the trash. It's got acid in it. So what I'm going to do now is pour in. Probably about a quart of acid, and I think I need to have something to put it in when I take it out again. And I guess get my bucket over here. Turn this thing off again. Okay, what we're going to do is move outside because this is really work you want to do outside. Uh, acid can leak out of this thing while you're shaking it, and uh, you don't want to get it all over. You want it outside. Now, if you've never done this before, probably really smart to have a garden hose with a nozzle on it nearby. If you really get yourself covered with acid somehow, uh, or if you get it in your eyes, you're going to need a lot of water to flush the acid out. And so a garden hose is a very uh, cheap piece of insurance. Uh, so you notice I've got, an extra, I've got the whole box of baking soda here. I've got the bottle with the uh, uh, <coughs> the baking soda and water solution, which neutralizes the acid. <coughs> I get a container to pour my acid out of the gas tank again, and I've got my phosphoric acid. <coughs> you know how gas caps are; they leak. <coughs> so you have your choice of what you want to do here. Um, <coughs> live with the fact that you know it's going to leak, or you could try taping it up to seal it up if you wanted to. But uh, not quite sure how that would work. So what you know is that there's going to be acid that leaks out of there. So <coughs> that's why you might want to wear your rain suit and your rubber boots. Okay, I've got my gravel in there. I'm going to pour my acid in. You don't need a huge amount, but uh, you can see that I used probably, oh, I don't know, eight ounces or something, half a quart. Should be enough. The rocks are doing the real work in here. And don't fool yourself. The whole underside of this tank, the top, uh, is rusty. 
not just what you can see in the hole, but it's what you can feel up here as well. So, you're going to have to do this. Every bit of it. Now, how long you do this, how vigorously, and how much acid, and whether or not you drain it out and do it again or not, is up to you. I don't have a lot of flaky rust in here. But I have a lot of rusted surface. And <coughs> it was enough to clog up the jets in my carburetor and uh, put the generator out of this one. So now I'm going to equalize my hands a little bit. Well, I dropped the bottle. Of uh, soda water and splashed it all on my face. If you drop the bottle of acid, you'll get the same effect. <coughs> so, <coughs> like Bob Newhart said, <coughs> Just don't. All I'm going to do is feel in here and you can see that there's a lot of loose rust in that liquid. Drain the acid to one side and shine my light in here to see what I got. And I see a lot of pockmarked uh, steel surface and still still some rust clinging so we'll continue to agitate <coughs> the acid <coughs> foaming up in there <coughs> means it's reacting <coughs> and <coughs> stinks smells kind of like rotten eggs You can see that there's acid leaking out from this filler cap <coughs> and getting on the outside of the, the tank. It's getting on my hands. That's why I got the gloves on. And it's gonna, this is why we're doing it outside. So, <coughs> the gorilla tape seems to be holding up quite well. That's good. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Now this is the first step, and this is common to any tank you're working on. Whether it's a rare and classic motorcycle, or a cheap Chinese generator, or uh, you know, an oil tank, or a fuel tank on a car, it doesn't matter. It's the same process. Uh, the only thing that's different is the scale of how much acid you have to use how much uh, sharp rocks you're going to use and how much uh, baking soda and water and plain water you're going to have to use to neutralize it all when you're done. But this is the same process. When you get done, when we drain this out, the next thing we're going to do is neutralize the acid. We're going to pour most of the baking soda and water in there and swirl it around neutralize it, pour it off, put some more in, do it again, and then we're going to flood it with water, probably with a garden hose, and really rinse the hell out of it. So that there's no acid and no baking soda either, because baking soda can be corrosive. Uh, when we're done, we're going to have, it's going to be nice and clean. Then we're going to put it on, uh, do something to dry it. If you have it summer and you've got a clothesline, you can pin it up on a clothesline and leave it in the sun. If you have an electric radiator heater, uh, you can put it on low, set it on top, and dry it that way. Uh, I like that method a lot. I also use it when I'm going to paint and even uh, heat my spray cans that way. So a very, uh, it's a gentle uh, heat, no flame. You can regulate the heat, and uh, it's thorough. You can leave it overnight till it's bone dry. Okay, so next. <coughs> This is the part where you want to be careful. And we're going to get... Well, I took all the rust off that cap too. Didn't have much, but it had a little... We're going to get rocks and acid out of here. And it's difficult to get all the rocks out and make no mistake about that. It used to be difficult to get anything out of here. You may have to run it out through the petcock hole. This is slow, but this has got a big lip on it. And it doesn't want to drain out of it very much. so I don't want to take the gloves off.
this smells like rotten eggs. And I can't explain that because it's supposed to be phosphoric acid and not sulfuric. It shouldn't smell sulfurous. Here it is anyway. See how that foams up when you neutralize it with the baking soda. Well, anybody tell you this isn't messy? Okay, I've uh, uh, rinsed the hell out of the uh, tank with the garden hose. You can see all the water that I used. So, uh, getting acid on myself from the tank isn't an issue anymore. But uh, there's still plenty of stuff that has acid on it here that I have to deal with. So what I'm going to do is pull this tape off of here that's covering a big hole where the fuel gauge was. And uh, I can get it off. I call it Gorilla Tape for nothing. And then I'll be able to get the rocks out that big hole much easier than sticking my hand in the hole. And Trying to get them when that the lip around the the filler is what makes it hard to get the rocks out, and this has got a bigger lip than a lot of motorcycles. Okay, so now you can sort of see inside here and maybe see what kind of results we've gotten. But uh, got a coatable surface now, no, no loose rust. There might be a slight bit of discoloration somewhere in there, but uh, uh, it's all basically nice and shiny and smells kind of like a clean tin can. So now what remains is to dry the tank and to clean up this mess. You can see why I didn't do this in the shop. no acid in the uh, in the shop at all this cap 
I gotta put my gloves back on. It was not neutralized. It still has acid on it. So it's gotta be neutralized and flushed. I took the tank in house, uh, put more baking soda and water in it and warm water, which makes it more reactive, and uh, flushed it around real good and then flushed it with a lot of fresh water and uh, wiped it all off, drained as much water out of it as I could. Uh, hard to get the last little bits of liquid out of those things because they have little, the little lip where the petcock is so that if there's any sediment in there it doesn't go in the, the uh, petcock and of course it, it's dented in so they can thread it. <coughs> so, I'm going to have to make uh, more, uh, oh yeah, that's bubbling like mad. I have to make more uh, baking soda and water right here on the spot and uh, neutralize that cap and then take it over to the hose and flush it out real good. Okay. This is bicarbonate of soda which they call baking soda, it's sodium bicarbonate. Uh, you get the Arm & Hammer stuff, you know you got the right stuff. Baking powder <laughs> is not the same thing. So, all right. Okay. 
So here I've got the uh, the tank with a lamp shining on it. That'll dry it out tonight and tomorrow I'll be ready to coat.